Good morning, everybody. This is Ela, and I am going to talk about a phenomenon that drives new watercolorists crazy. And experienced watercolorists, it's something that's actually very desirable. And this is called granulation. What is granulation? Granulation is that gritty quality that some paints can have. It can really throw you off if you're not used to it. It is an effect that is caused by mineral-based pigments. So you can imagine ancient times people trying to make paint. What is a pigment that would stick around, that wouldn't fade? Flowers? No, they're going to turn brown and die. Minerals, dirt, rocks, these things don't change. They've been around a long time and they're staying the same. Ochre, the oldest paint. When you look at cave paintings and you see those hands printed, those big animals, they just took some soft dirts, ochres, plastered it right on there. You've heard of raw sienna, burnt sienna, raw umber, burnt umber, sienna and umbria, towns in Italy, dig up the dirt, paint with it, why not? Uh, the burnt versions, burn that dirt, the iron in it will turn red, you got a new color. Kind of hard to believe that people would crush stones, oh yes they did. Another real popular color, ultramarine, blue. Originally, it was lapis lazuli, a very precious stone. All those paintings of the Virgin Mary in her blue robes, that was lapis lazuli. Only the church had enough money to crush uh, precious stones and have artists paint for them. Most modern colors do not contain these original pigments. They now contain synthetic pigments, but many of them still do granulate because, like I said, a lot of artists really love that granulating quality. Next, let's look at how granulating colors work when you mix them with non-granulating colors. So I'm mixing an ultramarine blue by Cor and a cerulean blue by Winsor & Newton, and I'm making a couple of greens. And what you're gonna notice is that at first the colors are very deep, but uh, I'm gonna cut forward a, to a future time and you'll see that the colors have changed dramatically. They will no longer look like greens and instead they'll look yellow. And what has happened is that those dense mineral-like pigments in the blues will have sunk to the bottom of the palette and you won't be able to tell that they're green anymore. And if you accidentally paint with these colors without mixing them first, you're gonna get a really muddy effect. You can see how the blue is only on the tip of the brush and when you apply it to the paper, the blue and the green colors are still very separate. It's kind of a cool look, but it's not what most people are expecting when they paint. So now I'm going to show you some examples of some beautiful pictures that include granulating colors, some by me and some by John Singer Sargent, and hopefully you can appreciate how cool these colors can be. So like I said, most colors do not include these original minerals. However, there is one company that does, which is Daniel Smith, and they have a line called Primatech. I'm not sponsored, including amethyst and turquoise and all sorts of cool precious stones. It, it just sounds really exciting and glamorous to paint with these colors. However, there's a caveat. If you really want to try these out, buy one of these sheets. I think it's about $5 and you can actually just test out the colors without having to invest an entire tube. I have tried out a bunch of these and some of them are great and some of them I'm kind of disappointed with. Here's some examples. Here's lapis lazuli compared with ultramarine blue. And you can see how dramatically different these two colors are. The, the lapis lazuli, it it is like trying to dissolve a rock. I mean, it doesn't feel like paint. And you can see it's mostly scrubbed away and that's just me trying to get any color whatsoever. Whereas directly below you can see the ultramarine blue. You have rich color. I was able to use that blue in a painting. I still have lots more left. You would spend about $20 on the lapis and about $13 on the ultramarine. If you want beautiful blue paint, skip the lapis. It's not worth it and go straight to the ultramarine. So hopefully by now you've at least gotten a sense of either you want to try granulating paints or maybe you decide they're not for you. You don't want to get them. How do you avoid them? It would be really nice if you could just follow the colors that I've already mentioned, either avoid them or buy them. 
unfortunately, it can't be made that simple. It's it's why do they have to make it so complicated? Some paint companies do use granulating colors. M Graham, about half of their colors are granulating. Same thing with Daniel Smith. They use a lot of granulating pigments. These are expensive companies. It's really good quality paint and they are presuming that their market wants those qualities whenever available. Um, cheaper paints, on the other hand, Arteza, uh, Koi, uh, brands that don't list the colors on the box where you don't know what they are. And yeah, those colors are not granulating. <laughs> so if you don't like granulating colors, you're in luck. You can have cheap taste and um, just avoid them completely. There are also colors that call themselves the colors that are usually granulating, but are not. For example, Van Gogh has a cerulean blue. I got it in a paint set. I thought that's what cerulean blue looked like. Then one day I decided, hey, I'm gonna try another brand. Bought that Winsor & Newton that you saw earlier and was shocked to discover that it was granulating. Turns out Van Gogh's version contains thalo blue as the main pigment, which is not granulating at all. So yeah, it's good to do a little research or else just be prepared to be surprised. And if you decide to upgrade to a better quality paint, you might find that some colors that used to not granulate are now granulating. So I have, if you look in the description box below, I have a list of several companies uh, color charts and it breaks down each color by whether or not it's granulating, how light fast it is. It tells what pigments are in there. There's like a little code. That's a whole nother thing I could talk about in another episode. If you want to learn about other traditional pigments, I highly recommend this book color by uh, Victoria Finlay. Here it is. I've been reading it. it. It's interesting. She does a good job of actually making it entertaining, although it is dense. I mean, you can see I'm only halfway through. It's like a collection of stories, but it tells the history of all these different pigments, dyes, all sorts of cool stuff. So recommend this. I do want to make a full on review of the dot set Daniel Smith. There's actually a even bigger dot set that has over, over 200 colors, but starting off one thing at a time with just the Primatex here. And I want to know, do you have any stories about granulation, about staining colors, opinions? Did I forget something? Uh, yeah, let me know. Comment below. Yeah.